In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your own platform to monitor your LLM applications. Fully open source and we're going to do it in literally five minutes. It's that simple. Now, if you're new here, my name is Dave. I'm the founder of Data Lumina, and I've been building custom data and AI solutions for the past five years. And this exact setup that I'm about to show you is what we use to monitor all our client applications. So let's dive in. So we're going to set up Langfuse, which is an open source LLM engineering platform. And what you can do with this, when you work with large language models, you can track the traces, you can use evals, prompt management, and track all kinds of metrics relevant to your system. A platform like this is really a must have if you wanna move your LLM applications to production. Now, there are a lot of LLM engineering, observability, monitoring platforms out there. They all have different names. Everyone is trying to figure out what this means, what it should include and what not. We found Langfuse to be the best one right now in terms of its UI, the fact that it's open source and just how good it works out of the box. So what you can essentially do here with Langfuse is you can get an overview like you see here of all the interactions with your large, large language models. And this is not only limited to OpenAI, they cover a whole lot of models. So it's fully open source, here's the GitHub. But what I've done is I've created a separate repository called Langfuse Self-Hosted, which only contains the bare, bare bone elements of what you need to get started. So there are a couple of steps that I'm going to walk you through. And as you will see, once we start like the setup process, it will literally take five minutes for you to get this up and running. I will walk you through it, show some examples, and then also get into some next steps on how you can potentially improve the system. All right, let's start the timer. Now, everything that I'm about to show you is taken from the self-hosted guide that you see over here. So if you need more information, wanna dive deeper, here are the official docs. In order to follow along, you need Docker installed Python and you need an OpenAI API key. If you don't have that already, you can get those from here. Then to get started, first of all, you gotta clone the repository, open it up in your favorite IDE or terminal. And I've already went ahead and done that over here. So here we have the project. This is straight from the GitHub repository. Now we can look inside the readme file here. Let me actually open that in the preview. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the .env file based off the env example. This is from the official GitHub repository from Langfuse. So you can see there are a lot of settings that we can play with, but we only need a couple to get started. So what we can do is we can come in here, make sure we're in the right directory and we do, we do a cp.env example and then .env. What this will do, it will create an exact clone, um, but just to ensure that once we update this with potentially any other variables, we don't put it into our uh, version control. So it's excluded from the git ignore. So that's step one. Now, the next step that we're going to do is run docker compose up. So docker compose up and then we add the flag D from doing it detached. Let me actually spell that correctly. Docker compose up and what this will do, this will start up the Docker container based on the Docker compose file. So let's see what's everything that's in here. And this is also based on a template from the official Langfuse GitHub repository, but I've added some extra things to make it work with the environment variables, for example, from the database, if you want to change that later, but it's all uh, pretty straightforward. We have the Langfuse image. We grab the latest currently. If you want to set it to a, a fixed version, you can update that. And then it also depends on a PostgreSQL database. So that's where we're going to store everything. And we make sure we mount that as a volume. So the data is persistent, meaning that when, when we close this Docker and restart it, for example, the data is still there. And we run it in a detached mode. So, um, we don't have to keep track of this terminal anymore. It will just keep running. And what we can then do is we can come to the browser and go to localhost 3000. That's where this application is running right now. And then we can go to the sign up. So let's fill in your name, an email, and then also a quick password. And then we'll do the sign up. And now we're inside the platform. So from here, what we can then do, the next step is to create a new project. So you come in, can come in here to the bottom. Let me actually see. Uh, over here so you can actually see it we can create a new project and for example call it my llm project and then hit create 
Now, what you can do over here is you can see the host and we can also create a new API key. So we can come in here and you want to take this secret key, which can only be viewed once. So make sure you store the secret key and then you also get this public key. All right, so then with those keys saved, what you can now do, I have another .env file here in the project where you can see how you can add this to your LLM project. So this repository is just to set up lang views, but what you now ideally wanna do is you wanna to switch to a project where you're using a large language model and set up the following information. So you have the secret key, the public key, and the host. So let me actually switch to one of those projects to give you an example of what we're doing over here. And what I can do right now is I'm quickly going to run this test over here. And what this is going to do, it's going to first classify an incoming email ticket and then generate a response. So there are two LLM calls. So first we have the classic classification. So you can see we have a category, collaboration, a confidence score, and also a reasoning. And then we also have the response coming out of this. Now, the cool thing is we have the output and potentially have sent this to an application, but now let's switch to Langfuse and let's see what's going on in here. So we, let me actually refresh this. We can see we have some traces now in here and we can already see some costs and we can see some token usage. So let's have, actually have a look at what we see over here. So like I've mentioned, the chain that I just uh, demonstrated has two steps, classifying email and generating a response. And we can see both of those here in the dashboard and we can even see them bundled as one session. So we can come in here and we can literally keep track of the interactions with the large language models. And this is, I think, at the core, the main strength of what you can accomplish with Langfuse. There's a lot more that you can do, uh, but at the bare bones, this is already so useful to keep track of everything. So now we can come in here in the open AI generation and we can see the system prompt, we can see the user prompt, we can see the assistance call because we're using function calling here in the background. And then we can also come back to the trace and look at the second generation where eventually we have the response, which uh, was another function call and we have a we return a dictionary or a response model where we have three variables so the ticket status the response and the reasoning very cool right now to set this up correctly and get the traces here you can follow the following example in your code so you have to pip install langfuse then you have to import the observe decorator and you should get the OpenAI client or any kind of model that you're using through Langview. So they have the OpenAI integration. And then all you have to do is wrap the observe decorator around a function where you do a call to, for example, OpenAI. And that's it. That's how you get those traces in, in there. So let me actually show you what that looks like in the project that we're working on, or this is the template project actually. So. I can go to my pipeline and there I have the email pipeline and we have the uh, first the classify email. So you can see what we're doing here behind the scenes. And here you can just see we have the observe decorator over here and we also take a session ID to bundle those together, but that's all optional. You don't even have to do that with only the observe parameter, it will get in there. And we do the same thing with the generate response function that we use to in the second step, actually generate the response. And that's it. That's all you have to do in order to set up this system and monitor your LLMs. But now, of course, this deployment, this version is still local. And if you want to deploy this for a client, a client application, what you might want to look at is take in a certain like cloud platform to deploy it there. And you can reference the self-host documentation here and come over to platform specific information. So they have information on how to deploy it with Railway, uh, GCP, uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, uh, Heroku. So it is all, since this is now in a, in a Docker file, in a Docker Compose file, it is very easy to actually get it up and running on any kind of cloud platform that supports working with Docker. So that would be the next step, but it's out of the scope for this video because it's really going to depend on which pl platform you wanna use. Now, next to that, there is one final thing that I want to show you. So I have a quick demonstration here of how you can enable OAuth with GitHub. So right now, if we look at the platform, 
if I, for example, sign out, we can only sign in with email and password. So there's no two-factor authentication on that. And if you want to really put this on the server, make it available via a public URL, also, for example, at your clients as a member or as a viewer, you might want to put some more security measures on this. And there are a lot of ways to set up OAuth and using GitHub is very straightforward. I managed to set this up in literally two minutes by following these steps over here. And what you then have to do is you, if you come back to the env file, you can see all of the information in here. So for example, for GitHub, you ha just have to fill in these variables over here and then GitHub account linking, if that is set to true, what you will then get on the sign up is you will have a fancy like sign in with GitHub button over there or sign up with Google or sign up with Azure. So again, with this, you can also reference the documentation over here to see what that uh, would look like, how that works and how to acquire those credentials. But that said, those are really the, the next steps for, for this project. All right, and that's it for this one. And now the fact that you are still here means that you probably have quite a capable skill set when it comes to building applications with large language models. Really a skill set that a lot of companies are looking for right now. And if you consider to do that on a freelance basis to maybe get some side projects, but you don't know how to get started, how to get clients, then you might want to check out the first link in the description. It's a video of me going over how my company can help you with that. And in all transparency, it's a funnel designed to get leads for my company. So just so you know that, but if you consider freelancing, you might want to check it out. Now then, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you want to learn more about large language model projects and how we do that inside Data Lumina, you might want to check out this video next, where I go over how we find, build and deploy generative AI solutions. So go check that out right now.